So the DTL generator is asking you for a source directory and the target directory of where your HL7 messages are actually located. Um, you have to specify the document type for your inbound and outbound site and what the generated DTL name should be like. Um, the, we're going to use the control ID for matching the inbound and the outbound messages. Um, this is what they look like in my environment. I have a batch of eight messages for the inbound side and a batch of corresponding messages, eight messages for the outbound. If I click on execute, what's going to happen is that it's analyzing these two files and it generates a DTL class with set uh, statements for all fields where it has 100% confidence that the target value for that field always comes from the uh, source field. Um, where we don't have 100% confidence, you're going to generate that statement uh, and disable it. That's why it's grayed out here. Um, and in the description field, we're going to let you know why we don't have 100% confidence. In this case, for the patient ID, you can see that for 25% of all the occasions, the target value always was equal to the source value, but for 75% of the occasions, the target references were null. And in these cases, we don't really know what are, 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 they, are you setting it to null or is it is it a copy from the source? So that's why we are not absolutely sure and we're disabling it for review. You can take a look at uh, the visual comparison as you've seen earlier in the other demo. And basically we're comparing the, uh, the expected output against a run of the input files against our generated DTL. And the output of that run is what we're comparing against here. So we can see that say the patient ID is set in the expected output, that's what we expect to see, but we don't set it in our DTL at this point. And that's exactly what's happening here, right? The patient ID is not being set, it's disabled at this point. So let's enable it, compile the DTL and run the batch again. And if we refresh the visual comparison, now we can see that the patient ID is correctly set. Um, what we also can see is that the OBX segments are all screwed up at this point. So if you scroll down a bit here, we can see that we are appropriately looping over all the repeating groups, but that the OBX fields are not set. They're all disabled. Um, we do have very high confidence that the target value comes from the source, but in very low uh, occasions, we are not sure where the source value actually comes from. So let's enable those as we have a high confidence that that's what we want to do. Um, why don't we do that? Um, there are three more to go. And then let's do another run, right? So compile the DTL now, run again, and take a look at the output now. The OBX segments are all there as expected, and there's only one occasion here where something is off, and that's where you really have to go into the semantics of your DTL and make uh, if statements and introduce them uh, more complicated logic um, to deal with these cases. But overall, um, this approach allows you to quickly get to a DTL stop and then iterate on that DTL and improve it.